When we're done with this one, let's, I want to make it so that people can talk to each other. I want people to be able to talk to each other. So, so well, I was, was going to say when you're done with that piece, but they can hear me say this, but it's because it's five till, and I don't really don't. Good morning. Hi, Mary Alice. I can't see Mary Alice, but yeah. And Gaby, Gaby, I can't. You're not on video either. Maybe she's not there yet. Yeah. Can you hear me? Can hear you. Can't. I mean, I see your picture, but I don't see you. Well, I don't see anything to click to get into it. Um, I'm going to try again from the original thing. Right. When you first come on, you'll see a video, a video option, right? And, so. on the bottom, it and at the bottom, it says video, it has a video camera. You click on that. Yeah, but I, I'm not even that far. I just had the schedule a meeting thing. I'm just, can you still see me? I can see your picture and I can hear you. Oh, that's really weird. Oh, launch, launch meeting. I'm not launching a meeting. That's from your website, you know. I mean, on the screen at the bottom, there's, okay. Hi, Mary yeah. Alice. <laughs> and Muriel's been trying to connect to audio for a while. Yeah, her internet might be. There's Muriel. Hi, Mary Alice. Hey, Jennifer. Can't hear you. She knows. She can't. See She's waving. 
Can't hear you, Mary Alice. How do you go? You're, she's muted. She's muted. Can you still hear me? Yes. Well, you know, I'm just going to listen because <laughs> I can't seem to get in there at all. So I'll watch what I say. You did it last time. Yeah, I know. Oh, and I no, I know, I know Zoom, but I think it's my computer. Anyway, don't worry about it. Hi, Carol. Hello, Hoovers. Hello. I speak for both of us, I guess. He's not going to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing's changed at our house. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. There we go. Hi, Muriel. Hi, Susan. Hi, Susan. Good morning. Good morning. morning. How are you? My big computer doesn't have a camera on it, so I have to use my phone. <laughs> you see me better, Susan? I do. What's the matter? Can you see everybody? I know it's hard on your phone to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see you. That's about it. There. Now all of a sudden, I can see you. Gaby? Yeah, I just clicked the same old see return you. to meeting, and You're the this time session. something happened. <laughs> morning, Janet. Good morning. See, again. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a big discussion whether we should pull the curtain or not. You know, it's <laughs> or open kind it of more. Pretty out back there. Yeah, it's we've got a pretty backyard. Well, the backyard's not so pretty, but the ravine <laughs> behind the yard is nice. Can you see me? No, yeah. just your picture. Yeah. No, huh? Okay, I'm gonna do some clicking down there. There, there you are. Yeah. Okay. No. We're both shadowy, but that's all right. I can't. Yeah. Who's the small child jumping up and down on the <laughs> back there? That's Liam. Sean. Oh, that's Liam. Oh, okay. There's lots of children at Carol Beasley's house this morning. Hmm, that must be my. Uh, There's no one gone. here but Donald McGee <laughs> who was eating his breakfast. He just got up. Start. Where's he going? Oh, okay. That little lamp behind her, huh. right? You can't see us. <laughs> Oh, it said, oh, it said, no, it said disconnect audio on the bottom. We can hear you, Peggy and Kathy. Oh, okay. yeah, you just can't see us, huh? <laughs> you. Yeah. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's strange. Oh, she'll hmm. figure it out. My meeting, no. Can't even see. There's Todd. 
See, we can see Pam and Todd. Uh -oh. There you are. Yeah, you Hello. Good morning. Hey there. This yeah. is so odd to see everyone's faces when I'm used to seeing the backs of your heads <laughs> or in your faces. This is nice. I know what you all look like now. <laughs> There's Pam and Todd. Good morning, Pam and Todd. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Is the volume set on this? How high is it? <laughs> See, I think if we had the computer, mm -hmm. we close out so the tabs as participants and then they'll make this window. Right. How do you do that? You just click, click on participants down at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Liam. Hi, Liam. Hi. You are. What's in your, what's in your cheek? Let's do that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> a break. Yeah. Oh, that's a good thing. <laughs> there's there's four <laughs> grandchildren here. <laughs> oh. Oh, bless you. <laughs> Liam has prepared communion. Good. Very good. Carol Fisher. We'll wait a few more minutes and see. Anybody else show? I'm going to do that in a moment. Pam, how are things in the uh, Poland schools? Um, okay, so far, we're still there. Um, we've been there full time since school started. Right. Um, we have one student case right now, but it's someone that hasn't been back to school since Thanksgiving. I think they oh. were diagnosed over the break, so there was no um, contact tracing or increased exposure. Yeah. So just keep one day at a time, waiting to hear. Right. right. Morning, Hi, Janet. Janet. Morning, Janet. <laughs> Liam is um, an old hat at Zoom, so yeah, <laughs> he's controlling everything. <laughs> That's good. He hasn't been to school since uh, beginning of March. Oh, oh wow! Really? Oh. Wow! Hi, Tom. <laughs> <Good morning. laughs> he's not used to technology. Doesn't realize that. The slightest thing puts you on screen. Just walking by. Carol Hebron. Good morning, Carol. Good morning. Liam wants to clarify that he still had to do schoolwork. Even yes. though he's not been in person. <laughs> right. How long are you on for school each day, Liam? 905 to 2 o'clock. Oh gosh. Wow. Oh. It's a long day. Don't you get a lunch break? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do, they get get a break. Do you get a break at all? Okay. Do you stay on when you're having lunch or do you log off for a little bit and then get back on? You walk you get off. I just get off and then I have break. Okay. He has to do, like the teacher will have class time for a little bit and then they go off and do other online assignments. Okay. Um, like through Google Classroom or iReady. Yep. He still has his specials, um, you know, and then they, they're supposed to like have some, um, physical ed time, you know, I don't know how much, it's hard to get that in sometimes. Sure. It's called grandma labor. <laughs> it's called grandma labor. <laughs> so. uh, 
Very good. Tom just asked me to find out if there's an update on Bob Leboy. Um, Not really. He's just sort of in the process. Lots of tests and things trying to figure out. Um, I think they've got more appointments this week in hopes of some more definite answers. Okay. So is he, is he home or? Yes, he's home. Just not feeling so good. Well, tell him Tom's asking about him. All right, thank you. Well, I was concerned, so I'm glad Tom asked that question. Okay, I think um, this, this is us. So we will start. Mute, go ahead and push mute. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and welcome on this second Sunday of Advent. Remember today we are having communion, so I hope you are prepared for that. Um, so I would I want to let you know what songs Sarah will be singing today in case you want to sing along. Um, o Come, O Come, Emmanuel, Prepare the Way, and O Little Town of Bethlehem. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. And breathe. Remember that you are a beloved child of God.
So we know that we have sinned before God and before others. And yet we also know that if we confess our sin, we can be restored to a right and just standing before God and before others. So let us therefore confess our sin, trusting in God's promised mercy. Let us pray. Oh God, we confess that far too often we find ourselves stuck, overwhelmed, or aimless, trapped by fears and anxieties that paralyze us, constraining our actions. Simple acts of compassion, of connection with others, are enormously difficult, and sometimes anger, even rage, takes us hostage and we treat others as enemies, failing to discern your beloved image in them. Oh God, free us from fear and anger so that we can love without restraint, so that we may be compassionate as you are compassionate, because we are your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, hear the good news of the gospel. God's grace is stronger than any anger or fear that may, that may hold us in their grip. God's grace liberates us, freeing us to love and be compassionate. Thanks be to God, who in Christ empowers us to live fully and freely. And may the peace of Christ be with you. The Old Testament lesson this morning is from the prophet Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 1 through 11. Listen now for God's word. Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The Gospel of our Lord according to Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. 
as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The stories of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So there's waiting, and then there's waiting. You probably know what I mean. Some waiting is, well, just waiting. The pointless exercise we all have to endure from time to time, like sitting in the waiting room of the lab, waiting, just waiting for our name to be called so we, we can get our blood work done. Or waiting in the long line at the grocery store because Price Chopper never has but one lane open to check out. But, you know, that's my problem, I guess. But other waiting seems to matter. Like waiting in the doctor's office for the results of those blood tests or the biopsy or waiting for the vaccine to finally become available. You probably know what I mean. Some waiting just seems empty and pointless, while other waiting is weighty, significant. It really matters. And too often, I think the kind of waiting that we talk about during Advent seems like the former. Waiting to sing Christmas carols instead of those Advent hymns. Waiting to decorate, though no one waits to decorate. Waiting for Christmas generally, as if we'll spoil it if we don't wait right. But I don't think that's the kind of waiting that Advent seeks to invite at all. I think it helps to realize that Advent is all about promises. And not just Advent, of course, but the whole gospel. You know, most scholars consider that the terse, descriptive opening verse of the Gospel of Mark, which says, the beginning of the good news of Jesus, the Son of God, most think that that's not actually the first line of the book, but rather it's the title of the book. So Mark literally begins his account with the promise of Isaiah. It's the promise of Isaiah to desperate Israel at one of the low points of its history, which I think resonates with us right now, right? Because it feels like we are at one of the low points 
of our history. And while Mark clearly invites us to see John the Baptist as the fulfillment of Isaiah's promise that one will come crying out in the wilderness, it's the whole of Isaiah's promise of comfort and deliverance and renewal that Mark is claiming happens in the ministry of the one that John is heralding. And the thing about promises is they're not fixed, not ever. Rather, promises, if you hear them and believe them, create an expectation about the future and set something in motion. For example, back in the day, and this will date me, when I promised my children that we could watch a video, well, remember that, we could watch a video after their homework was done, inevitably, the movie was chosen. They knew that it would happen because a promise had been made. So you see what I mean? Promises create an expectation about the future. And that future expectation sets something in motion right here and right now in the present. The same is true about God's promise. Truth be told, even more so. And that maybe is the key message of Advent that in the stable at Bethlehem, God is not only keeping promises God made to Israel, but also making promises to us. That in Jesus, God hears our cries of fear and concern and doubt at our lowest points and then responds. And oh my goodness, but the headlines and the cable news channels are so full of low points these days. Just think of the numbers that we hear daily of people diagnosed with COVID, in the hospital for COVID, dead from COVID. The numbers are shocking right now. Or think about the racism and the bigotry present in even the highest levels of our nation. Or justice delayed, justice deferred for the deaths of so many young black men. And to these cries for deliverance, God responds with promises of healing and peace and justice in and through the life and ministry and death and resurrection of Jesus. I know, I know we've heard that kind of promise before. And at times I feel like it is just so much more pie in the sky. But think about this. What if God's promises are not all about the end time, something we wait for patiently until the end of time? Or maybe more accurately, what if we are invited to participate here and now in the promises of God by contributing to them in the present? What if, that is, part of how God keeps God's promises is through our own efforts to heal and comfort and help and bring justice? Mark has something to say about that. Remember how I said that the verse, first verse is probably Mark's title? for his work, and so the opening verse, which is the second verse, 
is a promise. Well, the title is a promise too. Notice that Mark doesn't call the book the good news or the gospel of Jesus. Rather, he titles it the beginning of the good news. Which means that everything that Mark has to say about Jesus, all of the healing and the preaching and the teaching and the exorcising and even Jesus' death and resurrection, all of it is only the beginning of the good news. There's still more to come. Maybe that's why Mark's gospel ends in such a strange and unsettling way, and it's so open-ended. Because it is, after all, just the beginning. The story isn't over. Which means we are all invited to continue the story of the good news of Jesus as God continues to write the gospel of Jesus in and through our lives as individuals, as communities of faith. So what kind of waiting do we want to do? We can sit around and wait for Christmas or for Christ's return for that matter, or, or we can get in the game. We can see how we can spend our time and our energy and our wealth and our lives making a difference right now. Because it's not just John the Baptist who is called to cry out and to prepare the way. It's all of us right here, right now, waiting actively by making a difference in the lives of the people God has put all around us. God is continuing the story of the good news of Jesus in and through our words, our words and our actions. And each of us will have 101 opportunities this very week to contribute to that sacred story, to make it come alive, to help God keep God's promises here and now. So what we, what we do will not actually bring ultimate healing or comfort or peace or justice. That's God's job. And God will keep God's promises to the fullest in the fullness of time. But we don't have to wait for that passively. We are invited to throw ourselves into that adventure, both trusting God's promises and living them right here, right now. And may it be so. And thanks be to God. Amen.
as we prepare to pray, um, if you want to be heard and participate in the Lord's Prayer at the end of the pastoral prayer, you can unmute yourselves. I've muted you, but you have to, but I can't unmute you. So if you want to unmute yourselves, you can do that. So as we are aware of the concerns that we have for our, for our own families, for our community during this time, um, I'm sure you are aware, aware of the record number of deaths now daily due to corona, the coronavirus. Now more each day than we, at least the same as we had on 9-11, which is just sort of shocking and terrible thought. And also, um, we know that the administration and the Justice Department are now trying to execute as many death row federal prisoners as they possibly can before the end of their term on January 20th. So that thought is also concerning and shocking. Aware of all the concerns that we have, that we carry within our hearts, but know that they are known by God. Let us go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, on this second Sunday of Advent, we ponder our human predicament, recognizing how often we find ourselves overwhelmed by circumstances, stuck in ditches of various sorts, given to aimless meandering on paths that lead nowhere, buried under by seemingly insurmountable challenges and obstacles, and yet you have promised to lift every valley, straighten the crooked path, level the mountains in order to come to us and lead us home. We hear your promises, O oh God. Empower us by your spirit to see the way you have set before us. Empower us as a community of faith to accompany one another on the journey. Help us to listen to each other with compassion when we feel fearful or angry or lost. Help us to recognize your tender love that is ever before us. And help us to believe the good news of the gospel that we are not left to our own devices. You have come close in the incarnate Christ, one with a human face who has left a footprint for us to follow. Oh God, we pray for the world of nations, including our own, as we continue to grapple with a relentless pandemic. We pray especially for the vulnerable among us, for medical professionals and staff, for essential workers, for parents with school-age children, for the elderly, for those with pre-existing health conditions. Oh God, help us to live responsibly in ways that protect the well-being of others. And we pray for all who are grieving the loss of loved ones during these difficult days. Oh God, we pray that you would grant wisdom to the leadership of our local communities, our cities, our state, our country, that they might discern a path forward in these perilous times. Indeed, grant all of us wisdom and courage for the living of these days. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us when we pray to be bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts 
as we forgive and lead us and not into temptation, but deliver us but from evil. evil. For thine is For the thine is kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory, and glory forever. Forever. Amen. Amen. Join in the feast, all you who dream and you who plan, you who have visions and you who like the cold, hard facts. In this meal, we see Christ most clearly broken and shared to make us whole. In this meal, we know the spirit entering our own bodies, feeding us and changing us from the inside out. In this meal, we see God's dream for the world, a feast where all sons and daughters, young and old, heir and disinherited, slave and owner, rich and poor, brown and white, all God's people come from north and south and east and west and sit at table together, sharing what God has provided. These are not Presbyterian tables. It's the Lord's table. And it's God who invites us to know grace and mercy and love served up in bread and the cup. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe, for you have planted your goodness deep within us all and shown us the way to return to you. Though our hearts are often hard and our minds closed, still you call out through prophets and through peasants, through the rooted and the refugee, through parent and child, through word and witness. You lived among us to offer us new life, life filled to the brim with grace, overflowing in honor and acceptance and love. And as we feast together, we remember those who are pushed aside from your table. We seek a glimpse of your heavenly banquet, a vision, of your kingdom, seeing you at every table, that we might be strengthened to begin that work here on earth. Moving aside, making room, lifting up voices long silenced, admitting that your spirit knows no bounds and your word is living and active even now. Prepare us, O oh God, to receive your good news in bread and the cup, in a baby in a manger, in the story of our neighbor. Even now, you call us to return to you, hearts broken by what breaks yours. Transform our brokenness into openness. Pour out your spirit and make us doers of your word builders of your dream, the body of Christ, ready to love, serve, care. We pray in the name of the one 
who is to come, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, as it was told to me, I pass on to you that the Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. the body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. In gratitude, in deep gratitude for this moment, this meal, these people, we give ourselves to you, O oh God. Take us out to live as changed people because we have shared the living bread and cannot remain the same. Ask much of us, expect much from us, Enable much by us, encourage many through us. So may we live to your glory, both as inhabitants of earth and citizens of the commonwealth of heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage, hold fast to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people. Love and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen.
So if you want to spend a few more minutes talking with one another, you can uh, unmute yourselves so everyone can hear each other. We can pretend like this is coffee hour <laughs> without, without Betsy's cheese dip. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be celebrating Susie's uh, first birthday in heaven today by lighting angels. Um, Carol taught us how to make luminaries, so um, I'll have a luminary at my house. And Kathy actually bought lighted angels for us, so we'll be doing that. And we're also going to be making a donation to um, the Seattle Children's Hospital where they're doing pediatric research because, you know, pediatrics was one of Susie's passions. Thank you for sharing that, Peggy. Peggy, how are you feeling? <laughs> I'm feeling okay. I would be lying if I said I felt great. Mm -hmm. I had uh, some pretty significant pain the other day and took a little trip to the ER, but my heart is good, so that's good news. So it's, it's just pain, as I call it. And it'll go away. Too much rest, but... I guess I'll have to put up with that. <laughs> well, we're praying for you. Thank you. I'd just like to thank particularly Sarah and Susan for going through all this for so many months here on what I call TV. <laughs> Uh, that's not easy. And I also want to thank Janet, who is going to do another Advent tonight. And we can't forget Vicki. <laughs> she hasn't appeared, so. <laughs> Over there at the organ, yes. There's Vicki and Janet. <laughs> And Vicki provides the uh, internet hotspot in the sanctuary so that we are able to do this mm -hmm. Zoom. We don't need the internet when we're just recording it, but for Zoom we do. And this is all being recorded, so. Don't do anything inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Now you tell us, yeah. <laughs> Damn. You look sad. Pam has a runny nose and kind of a bad diaper, I hate to say. <laughs> These are some of the presents that have been dropped off for the Foothills families. Hmm. Is showing those. I'm so glad we were able to continue doing that this year, yeah. even if it is different. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably one of the neediest times, actually. I just lost the Zoom meeting. Oh, Instead of like a clothing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, the the re the requests this year were just hats and gloves, and then a toy, right? right. Yeah, yeah. Vicky's doing a tour of the sanctuary <laughs> with, her, with her computer. <laughs> The Advent wreath. <laughs> we didn't light our candles. The new we have an Advent wreath. We lit it. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's Sam. He's looking. No, that's Nola. That's no oh, Daddy God. just left to go get Sarah. Oh. <laughs> Come here. Nola. Use a new candle or a new. Oh. Want to use the other one? Yeah, use the other one. Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> Has the skunk smell gone away in there? Yes. It, so there was a just a very small <laughs> smell when I came in this morning, but it's not like it was the other day. <laughs> That's good. There was a skunk around somewhere. I don't think it was inside, but boy, it smelled like it was. <laughs> Nola. 
Oh, the lamp is getting full there, Grandma Carol. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And Papa Larry is off at Rome Presbyterian today. Ah. Uh, there's Sarah. Yes. And there's Sarah. There's Mama. You know, mm -hmm. Mama. Doesn't know what to make of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sam has a shot glass. It looks yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> <Our> communion cups. <laughs> Sanctuary looks beautiful. Good. Yep. Those sconces are pretty. Yeah. So Cindy put a uh, dimmer on them, so because they were just shining very brightly. So we can dim them even further, which I think we'll do for the Christmas Eve service, maybe. And who th who do we have to thank for decorating the church? Cindy Rye. Cindy. Yep. She didn't do the balcony since nobody can see the balcony. <laughs> but me. Well, so, I noticed the reefs on the outside of the door, too. And the reefs outside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We did all of that. Yeah. Cindy is our, our whole property committee all right. in one. She's, and she's always looking for things to do. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah. I could give she her a list. She, would much <laughs> do, she says she would much rather do things than go to a meeting. Uh. <laughs> Does it matter whose property the job is at? <laughs> there you go. We'll question. volunteer ours. <laughs> Maybe she'd like to fix those shelves in the cupboards in the kitchen. <laughs> oh. So thank you for coming and Zooming. Thank you for doing this. It's nice to see yeah. people. It really it is. Helps. Yeah. So last, time, last time we had double this many, so I don't know what happened. but Yes, but you see in Carol's picture, Carol Beasley, there's several people. and We've got two in ours. The bins yeah. have got two. So, you know, we got doubles. <laughs> we, had, we had two screens worth, though, last. Oh. Yeah. Are you Zooming it Christmas Eve? Well. <laughs> Not Zoom nope. Christmas Eve. No, we will pre-record Christmas Eve, but then, so this is this is news news for everyone here <laughs> gathered. But um, I got this idea from Kevin Bailey um, to we'll we'll try to figure this out to gather on Christmas Eve at say five o'clock outside to sing, bring your own candle, bring your own way to light your candle, whether it's battery or lighter. And we will gather and sing Silent Night with candles outside the church. That's wonderful. Um, That's great. Wearing masks and social distancing, hoping that the weather will cooperate with us. And so that's that's our plan. More more news about that to come, but that's that's our Wonderful. My, I haven't talked to anybody about it, but anyway, that, that's um, a way for us to at least share part of the experience that we normally have on Christmas Eve and to be able to see each other and say Merry Christmas. Just a simple, you know, gathering for a few minutes. So, but our, um, and our Christmas Eve service will be recorded the day before and we'll try to make it as close to what we normally do as possible. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. But now we pray for good weather on Christmas Eve. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's Would wonderful. Come, well, Great idea. Come bundled up and be able to see each other. All right. Well, it looks like my helpers here are wearing their coats and ready to go home. So I think I <laughs> and, she, and she takes the internet connection with her. So that's right. Yeah. Awesome. So there you go. <laughs> All right. So happy Bye. Advent. Bye bye. All right. Stay stay well. Yeah. Yep. Stay safe. See you next Zoom.